All right, welcome back to another edition of the Bebo Knows Podcast. This is your host, Brian Bullock, and this is the NFL Draft Edition 2020. Uh, with me is Seth Byrne. Welcome once again to the pod, Seth. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Brian. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming, and I'm glad uh, you know glad to hear you, and hope everything's going right. How's everything going where, uh, where you're staying? Because I know you're obviously in like the most affected area of probably the world. Um, so how, how's that going for you right now? Well, not great. I'm afraid that I know people who have suffered from COVID-19. It's, it's, it's hit the area pretty hard, both the city itself and various parts of Westchester where I live. They, this virus is dangerous. Take it seriously. Stay as safe as you can. That's all I can say. Okay. Now, um, with, uh, with being in New York, how hard or easy is it to actually stay isolated? Because, I mean, I it's obviously very uh, condensed population, but are you okay where you're at? Well, I know three different uh, – where I am is fine. I'm in the burbs. I can – there's various local uh, fruit shops, uh, um, delis or uh, meat shops, meat purveyors, and uh, fish purveyors and such – that I that I know that I've worked with for years that I can call them, give them my credit card, put in an order, and then generally there's a twenty four hour turnaround we'll be able to pick it up the next day. So and I'll drive up, curbside pickup, I'll just pop my trunk, they'll drop it in the trunk, and I'll drive home. No interaction apart from on the phone and that. But that's that's all reasonably safe and I have a pretty good food supply from that fashion. In the city itself, I know multiple families that have fled the city because the city's having a lot of issues and a lot of problems. So, yeah, that that's uh, there was a friend of mine who called me up roughly a month ago and said, "We're getting out of the city tonight. Can you come and help us?" And I was like, "Yeah." And so I drove into the city. They packed up in two cars, and then we drove them to their new abode. Like the city. He's getting hit very, very hard, and we're not allowed to watch yet. It's going to be a while. Yikes. So I, I, I was reading your, in your outline here about restaurants. Have you been doing your part to uh, to, to try and uh, do this curbside delivery, like, on a regular basis? Yeah, there's one local restaurant that I've been a patron of for many, many years. It's the bar that I actually normally get drunk at for the NFL draft. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to do so this year, but I will definitely get to take out from them this Thursday night. Uh, pick up a bottle of wine from them as well, just because. And yeah, um, the, the, uh, there's there's a limit to how many places I can support, um, given that I do do a fair amount of cooking. But uh, I will. I, I don't want I can for this one restaurant. So okay. and hopefully they survive all of this. They're doing the best they can in these trying times. Yeah, I've I've been trying to uh, get take out beer uh, as much as I can from local places because I I figure it's going to be the smaller places that hurt the most. So um, yeah, absolutely. So um, so as far as like your um, hobbies, um, have you dusted any old ones off that uh, that you've been meaning to um, get to? Well, I mean, given that so much stuff has to be indoors, that leaves books, video games, Netflix, stuff like that. So yeah, I. I I've been, uh, I reread Kitchen Confidential just because I was thinking so much about restaurants these days and what they're going through. Um, I read uh, The Big Short. Um, I really enjoyed that. I, not as much as I enjoyed Liar's Poker. Liar's Poker I thought was a better book and a more fun book, but I enjoyed them both. Um, going to read uh, James Clavell's big tome, Shogun. Now, when, I, when I say big, I am genuinely impressed at how thick this guy is. This is apparently 1,152 pages, and it looks like it's 1,152 pages. It's not high enough. So, I, that was um, the one that uh, Mitty was talking about, right? Yeah, apparently it's just a really, really great book. Everyone says so. Like, So if I'm going to have this kind of free time, then I might as well go deep when I can. Okay. All right. Um, well, let's go into the NFL talk. Um, sure. So, yeah, this is probably this is probably exciting people more than usual. I mean, the NFL draft usually gets quite a bit of hype, but given that it's really the only player in town right now in terms of uh, any sort of action going on, it is kind of exciting for people. So, um, so as far as your average, you, what, 
as far as your prep goes, um, what goes into your prep in terms of um, like prepping through video versus data analysis versus whatever else I can't think of? What's like? Yeah, let's... Sure, sure. Let, 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 let's start at the top. This year is different from the other years for a few different reasons. First, there's no NCAA tournament to distract me. Normally, I'll start doing everything for the NFL draft once the Final Four has been set. There's just not that much NCAA stuff left to deal with. Yeah. This year, no tournament. I've had more time to dig in. Now, I also have had less data in terms of the numbers. So only the pro days, maybe even all the pro days, I'm not sure, have been canceled. And so we're just missing, I think we had a few pro days, but we're missing just so much data. Players that said, look, I'm not going to run the combine, but you'll be able to get my information later with the expectation in good faith that they really would run later. And then that, that couldn't happen. Um, so I have a lot of blank spaces in my uh, spreadsheets. Now, in terms of the numbers itself that I post, those are based off of the data from just their, their stats, like who they faced, how well they did in a variety of games. Um, it does know which games they accumulated those stats in. I have the game data. And so if a player had big days against the toughest competition, that will matter more than if you struggled in those games but crushed the scrubs that you faced. Um, so I have the game data, and then I have the combine data um, and the whatever pro day data there is. So I have their measurables and their results, and that's what informs that information. Now, in terms of the write-ups, those all come later because that's, that's after I've watched all these guys play myself and formed my own opinions on them. Um, there was one player, uh, Duggar, I think Kyle Duggar, who played Division II, and I honestly can't recall the last time I've had to watch Division II games. I guess it probably happens sometimes, but just in his case, I'm just watching to make sure he's a man among boys, making sure that, yeah, this guy is unlike the other players on the field. He belongs in the NFL, and they most certainly do not. Um, so the data, the numbers themselves come from the results. My opinions come from watching them. So in the case of, say, Herbert out of uh, Oregon, I watch him. And, well, I guess we'll talk about the Corvus later, but I, just, I watch him, and he's just incredibly frustrating to watch. Oh, by the way, I have two kitties who are being very, very meowy today. So okay. we're going to have some that's, cats in the background. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, like, I watch the film so I know what I think about them, but the numbers are what they are. Okay. Now, when do you normally start your prep? I'm guessing it's it probably started a little earlier this year, given that there was probably... Yeah, yeah. so normally it would be like, so let's see, the Elite Eight games finish up on Sunday... Um, on Monday, I'm still going to be pretty much focused on college basketball uh, for the games for the Final Four, whatever features are remaining, whatever stuff we have to deal with. But generally that Tuesday is when I'm going to start dumping uh, all the player data in, uh, grabbing it from various places and inputting all that, the data entry. This year, all that started earlier. Okay. So um, this year, it started at some point in March when... So there's this photo of uh, from the Big East tournament. Uh, they canceled a game at halftime. The game the game started. The game didn't finish. Yeah. Um, and there's this photo where I, everyone's gone home except there's one mascot that's still sitting in the stands. And that I believe was the day. That was that was the sign. All right, time to switch forward to the NFL draft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, it was it was pretty much a guarantee. Once the first, um, once once Gobert got sick, I feel like everyone knew what was going to happen after that. Yeah, um, and that's the other reason why I'm just so skeptical that team sports will be able to get off the ground here. Um, I know that they're playing baseball in Taiwan, and I hope they can make that work. They're talking about Korean baseball starting up, and that'd actually be a much bigger deal. Um, if, if the, I think it's called KBO, if they can get the KBO up and running, that would all actually be a really good sign for where if you have a good testing regime and a good tracing regime, then maybe, maybe you really can 
get back to some level of normality with sports. But right now, we're going to have to wait and see on that. Yep. Um, so in your um, in your draft prep, how like, and this is just a general question, not so much applying to this year, but how have you adjusted your draft prep from when you started to, to now in terms of like what your um, data or your eyes might value more than it did um, in the past? So the number, the spreadsheets I have, I built years ago. And at this point, they're a little bit black box-ish where I'm going to dump the numbers in and then I'm very curious myself to see what numbers pop out. Um, and one of the things I do is I will update, well, how these previous players have done in the NFL. And there's one obvious case where there was a guy who uh, was my wide receiver number one, McCon Treadwell, where I expected him to be a success in the NFL. His numbers looked good. I thought he was going to succeed. And didn't really work out that way. And so I input, well, this was the things we were good at. This was the thing that this were his weaknesses. Well, those weaknesses apparently mattered more than I thought, and those strengths mattered less than I thought, and that's, that's going to be updated. Um, and then there was DK Metcalf, who in some ways was, was the opposite of Treadwell. They, they had some strengths, but they, uh, Metcalf was much more athletic. He was much better at creating separation than Treadwell was, and he ended up doing very well with Seattle. And so then you have another update, again, in the same direction. Well, in the modern NFL, receivers, you'd better be good at getting separation. It's less important than uh, being able to, in college, win contested catches uh, for a variety of reasons that might not be replicable in the NFL. Okay. All right, so with – with this year's draft prep, um, having a lot less data, I'm sure, is affecting your um, your uh, rankings here. Uh, well, yeah, it, it definitely did, but there's nothing really I can do about that. I mean, and you're always going to have some blank spaces of a guy who doesn't run at the combine and doesn't do certain drills um, in his pro day or whatever else. There's always going to be some blanks. So you, you have just – this year there were just more of them. However, at least like the season itself finished. We we have the entire season's results. It's not like the NBA draft where players, just our teams, we've been looking to see how various players perform in the NCAA tournament against tougher competitions, guys from smaller schools. How are they going to do when they face the guys from the major conferences? Like, no, that we don't have that problem, at least in college football. All the games were played. You have the film. Like... This year is a uh, year where I feel like the good, the teams with good scouting departments and a good idea of how to handle what they see might have an, a larger edge than they normally would. Okay, so that you think that'll be exposed on the weekend? Yeah, we we might say that. Mind, mind you, like we still had the combine, we just missed some of the pro days. So like. Okay. The the bigger issue might be the lack of medicals, lack of the ability to bring guys in and run team-specific tests on them, whatever interviews you want to do, whatever stuff you want to have your doctors examine, you're just not going to have that this year. Not in the same way. So um, that's an area where teams are going to be scrambling a bit. Okay. Um, So before we get into the actual uh, draft itself, we had uh, a listener question from uh, Hagrid here. And sure. he, he was asking if, if you truly believe that it's most likely there will be no sports until 2021 baseball, and which which he says he, he don't th- he doesn't think you do because you won't make a market and and book you spineless cuck. Um, t- talk about the thread I started the other day regarding the discount rates of 2021 picks, and if you're a NFL GM, are you looking to move um, 2020 picks and grab more 2021 picks than you would? other years and do you think uh, this has any impact on the draft props whatsoever all right there's a ton to unpack here yes so let's take it from the top the first thing is um i didn't say that uh, i don't expect them to play till 2021 baseball i said i don't expect them to play till 2022 baseball oh which right. is a much bigger that's statement. right yeah um so that, that, that's just a little typo, so let's, let's cover that at the top. The second thing is I do not advise people, and I won't do it myself, to make markets 
unless they know what they're getting out of them. Unless, like Michael Burry uh, from The Big Short, he went to Banksy. He, had, he wanted to short uh, these securities, these uh, housing securities, mortgage-backed securities, and he went to uh, Rodney Banks, and it turned out he didn't know this at the time, but AIG was willing to be a counterparty, and they were willing to make a market with him. But I do not recommend people make markets. In general, I recommend people let markets be made, let them get liquid, and then wager into them. And I'm looking for markets in this to short. I'm looking for liquid markets to bet against the finishing of the NBA season, the start of the next season, uh, same with the NHL, and same with the NFL. Like, I would be happy to bet against the uh, NFL season starting um, or finishing whatever the market may be. Um, I'm not going to make that market, though. I'm going to bet into it when it exists. Um, so let's see. That's, that's the start of that. Now, there was a question of how to value 2020 versus 2021 picks. Um, traditionally, the discount rate is roughly around. So a... 2020 uh, third round pick can be cashed in with a 2021 second round pick. Um, if you want to move up one round, it costs you one year. So, um, will that discount rate change? I think it will, but it's, there, there's forces pushing it in both directions. So because of uncertainty and how you might feel about the prospects of this year's class, you might prefer to punt and just say, hey, uh, I don't really want to use my second round pick this year. I'd rather have a first round pick if I can get one for next year's draft, any takers. Um, and that's fine. But we don't know. Hold on a second. I've got to call to you. You're back. Okay. I'll pause it. Off when we're talking about the discount rate between various years. Um, so this was Hegren's question, valuing 2020 draft, draft picks versus 2021 draft picks. Yeah. So another thing to take into account is what kind of information uh, GMs expect to have about the 2021 draft. Let's say you're a GM who's skeptical about the ability of college football to play. Um, one of the biggest differences between pro and college football is the amount of revenue they get from their television contracts versus the amount of revenue they get from the fans in the seats. The NFL gets a much higher percentage of their revenue from television. College football gets an enormous percentage of their revenue from actual ticket sales. It's, I, these numbers sound almost too large in terms of difference to be believed. But my memory is something like I saw it posted that the NFL gets about 85% of their revenue from television and college gets something like 70 plus percent of their revenue from ticket sales. Wow. And so if that's the case, it's very, very hard to imagine how college football runs. Um, like it makes much, much less sense for them, historically at least, to play with empty stadiums. Now, it's possible that beggars can't be choosers, and if they can send out. But then, then, then there's the other thing, where it's hard for colleges themselves um, to get campuses up and running. And if you don't have your campus up and running, it's going to be very hard to get your football team, your college football team, up and running. So while it, it's going to be very, very difficult for the pros, it might be borderline impossible for college football. And if that's the case than the 2021 NFL draft. Like, we talk about not having information on players for this year's draft, and we're missing some bits, but the 2021 draft could be the Wild West in terms of trying to draft players. Um, the NFL rules state that you must be three years out of high school. It does not say that you have to have played college football for all those years. So if there's no college football season, I don't think that changes anything in terms of the CBA and draft eligibility. So these guys will be eligible while all having missed a year. Good luck. Yeah. And, so. Yeah, and yeah. To, and to think like um, you will go into the quarterbacks in a little bit, but to to think that there could be like 
a Joe Burrow type that would have been, I don't know. I mean, would he have been drafted if like, if this scenario would have played out like, you know, um, last year, like, I don't know, but you know, he wouldn't have been the number one pick. He wouldn't have been anywhere close. Like his stock rose dramatically this year. Um, and some of that was like their coaching scheme was excellent. Their offensive scheme was just really, really top level. But he just watching the plays he made himself and his decision making in his arm, just all of it, he really did take the step. Like he he was a much worse player he last year than he was this year. He he improved a lot. It's not just luck. It's not just random variance. It's not just a fluke. He got better. Okay. So, um, and, and actually another reader question just came in, or listener question just came in sure. uh, before we go into the um, actual players themselves. Um, what, uh-huh. This came from Simon. Um, he said, what was the, what would be the biggest draft strategy adjustment you would make as a GM this year? Oh, wow, that's that is an interesting question. I guess I would just try to take advantage of other teams possibly panicking. Like if teams for whatever reason really wanted to sell, I might look to buy and vice versa. It's like I I guess I would just try to be a merchant. I'd try to buy low and sell high be more active on the phones perhaps than normal. I mean, I guess normally I'd always like to be a merchant, but that's the bigger thing. With with more uncertainty this year, I think I be might be more aggressive in terms of being a trading partner. So that's that's I guess what I'd be looking to do. Okay. Um but I, I, I don't know how actionable that would be. Like if you want to be a more active trade partner, one of the things you have to do is lower your prices. Like Yes, um, other teams might be panicking, but I might not be the beneficiary of that panic if I'm not willing to be more aggressive about making those trades than other teams. So I guess I'd have to increase my risk tolerance. That's what I would try to do. Okay. All right, now going into some of the draft stuff now, um, for specific to this year, what are you looking forward to most about this draft? All right, so... One player more than any other is the key to the draft, and that's Tua. Yeah. Um, and it's because he's a quarterback, and it's because we have no idea where he's going to be drafted. Um, so you have ESPN and you have PFF who have these models, and they model players. And um, so ESPN says the Dolphins should trade up to number three overall and take Tua there. And PFF then next levels them and says, no, 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 Washington should take him second overall. And they both have these models saying this is a good idea. And as far as I could tell, neither of these models are taking into account the fact that he has a huge medical red flag. Um, and it's not actually just the hip injury, although that is a big issue. He's also just had multiple lower body injuries and their concerns – so there are three concerns. The first concern is, can he play at all? The second cer- concern is, if he does play, is he going to be the same player he was pre-injury? And the third concern is, well, even if he can play, and even if he is the same player he was pre-injury, is he still going to be very vulnerable to future injuries? Will he be able to stay on the field? And these are three things which all discounts to a, and I just don't know if either of these models are taking them to account. Actual NFL GMs, one of the ways you get fired is you take a quarterback or trade up, even worse, for a quarterback high in the draft and then not have him able to play for you. That, that's that's how a GM loses his cushy job. And GMs don't like losing their cushy jobs. They like keeping their cushy jobs. So you're going to see some risk aversion there, even though they really do want to grab a potential star quarterback. This is the end and the end there. So Tua, Tua is the key to the draft. He's the one I'm going to be watching the most. Now, beyond that, there are a lot of cases where you, you have players with uh, who play the same position with similar ratings, and, well, what order are they going to go in? Um, I have four offensive linemen all packed in one tight range, 
And it'll be very interesting to see what order they go off the board and when they go off the board. Uh, and it's also the case with the wide receivers. Um, this is a very strong draft for wide receivers, but if teams fall in love with one guy, if that's the one they want, they might be aggressive going up to snatch them. So we're, we're going to see uh, which wide receivers come off the board and how fast as well. That's going to be something interesting to watch. So that, those are the three things I'm looking for, the offensive linemen, the wide receivers, and to himself. And I'm, and actually, now that I said it all, I'm curious, is it a fluke that they're all three positions are on the offensive side of the ball? Like, quarterback, obviously, is going to be most important, so it's not a fluke there. But I wonder, um, have just offensive players become more important in the draft? Somebody goes offense and become more dominant over defense in general in the NFL with all the rules banned in defense. I don't know. Sure. I'll think about that. And, and I think um, I read a tweet of yours that said that um, somebody was asking your thoughts on uh, Tua falling, and I think you said there was like a, a one in six shot of him falling past the sixth pick, and then be, if, if, if he falls that far, it's like a crapshoot on how far he'll actually fall. Yeah. Um, at this point, I, I, I got figure maybe one in six was a little high. Like, I feel like if he falls to the Dolphins, the Chargers, and they didn't actually have to trade up to get him. They losing the fifth or sixth pick and draft sucks. Certainly, if it doesn't work out. But I also would understand why they do that. Because well, this is the guy you wanted. He fell to you. This is your chance. You also have uh, Byers Morris about not taking him. So I know this is all psycho babble, and I can't get into their heads, and I wouldn't want to if I could. But um, <laughs> like. I feel like there's got to be a pretty decent shot that the, the Dolphins say, you know what, screw it. We were tanking to a – the tank didn't work out. We ended up with a fifth pick in the draft, but we still might get it. Like, serendipity, perhaps. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, and I, I don't think – I'm still shocked at how well Miami did given what they um, – what they did to dismantle their team. Like I, I thought that that coach should have been considered for coach of the year, given that. They... Oh yeah. I, same vote. Exactly. I, I actually went on the record on Twitter saying, yes, if I had a vote for coach of the year, that's when I would have done. Like, yes, that, that team at the start of the season, I, I, I wrote that. Like, I don't know if this is an NFL football team. Yeah. Like, they've constructed a semi-pro team. They haven't played NFL football games. And by the end of the season, they had five wins. They overcame that. Like, they, they really, really improved. Tremendous coaching job. Nothing over that. Yeah, that, that was – yeah, that, that's the most impressive five-win season I've ever seen. Um, Same. If there, if, 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 there's, if there's such a thing. Um, yeah. So in, in terms of uh, teams, GMs, players that you're most curious about, obviously you've mentioned Tua, but uh, in terms of like teams and GMs that you're – Looking forward to seeing how they um, are seeing how they draft uh, come Thursday. Who, who are you looking forward to the most? So let's start with the Giants because Gettleman is a train wreck that I cannot look away from. He is just so shockingly awful that it's not his fault anymore. He's not the one keeping himself employed. Like he's blameless at this point. <laughs> so he's just going to do what he's going to do. Um, and we're just going to have to watch and see, like, other, other people might be looking to trade down, but he's never done that. Like, no matter how much we write about how modern NFL theory should be, like, you don't take running backs, you trade down, he's just not going to listen, ever. So, like, yeah, I'll be watching him, watching what he does. Um, the Dolphins, something because they have some draft capital, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, the Seahawks, I've gotten used to them. Just going cowboy, taking players. Sorry if you use that expression in case. Yeah, but they, they'll take players. They'll they'll reach, as it were, um, for guys. And sometimes it works out. More often than not, I, I think it's hurt them. I think the drafting has limited their championship window. And so I'll be watching them. Um, every, every team has its own tendencies. You want to see whether or not they continue them or see if they break them. Uh, of course, I'll be watching the Jets. Hopefully, they don't do anything stupid. We'll see. Um, but now, the two GMs, the two teams I'm most interested in are the Giants and the Seahawks. And I guess the Dolphins again, because 
They have so many different directions they can go in. Yeah, they seem to control a lot of the directions the draft can uh, go in. Um, and plus, plus, I just I want to see some of these GMs try to make picks over the internet or like how are, are they now? I haven't actually heard it how it's going to be announced. Like I'm guessing each team has like a representative that's going to be like on a Zoom call or something. Um, so, have you been on any of those Zoom calls with lots of people? Um, with yeah, for work, yeah, um, where people can put their different backgrounds in and all that crap. Yeah, you like. We're, we're going to see, see some technical malfunctions oh, yeah. on Thursday night. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know who it's going to be, but someone's going to screw something up big time. It's, yeah. it's inevitable. Yeah, I, so I'll be watching for that. Yeah, I, I just saw a tweet coming um, about the Detroit Lions um, director of IT is going to be sitting in his Winnebago. Um, oh, yeah, we're talking about, about what, what kind of rush album he would have on his side of his vehicle. I, I was going to fly by night, but I don't know. I'll have to see. <laughs> so, okay. Um, in terms of uh, the player that you had the most curiosity with in terms of your numbers, we have to bring him up because uh, um, he's been a, a source of your curiosity. And, and what you were always wondering about Chase Young and whether the – uh, numbers you had on him right. were correct. So his numbers on one of, one of my um, projection systems had Chase Young being like Bruce Smith, Reggie White, uh, Lawrence Taylor. Like they had him just having Hall of Fame numbers. And that's not a thing that should ever really happen with the prospects. Just because the ranges, like the ranges should be, I guess, could be fairly wide. But, but you can't, can't have your base projection be that strong because, well, there's a, lot of, there's a long way between you and Ken. So, like, anyone can be a bust. I don't care how good you were in college. Anyone can be a bust. Um, and so, like, his reaction shouldn't be that good, but they're the best I've seen. Like, he he would have been higher than even Miles Garrett was if not for certain changes in how my systems, systems work between now and when that draft, draft took place. Like, like he looks perfect. Um, and I mentioned, I mentioned that I watched the Clemson, Clemson game because I wanted to see what a bad game from him would look like. And instead what I saw was a game where their opponents just put together a great game plan to shut him down. But the key thing is they, re- they felt they had the game plan to shut him down. Um him and Okuda were in the same team. Uh, Jeff Okuda was the best uh, quarterback I've seen in a long time. And when you saw how teams attacked them, well, you had to respect Okuda, certainly, but you had to have a plan to stop Chase Young or else Chase Young would stop your plans. So, yeah, he's awesome, and he'd be my first non-QB off the board in pretty much any draft. Okay. Now, um, now weighing positional value, um, would you e- – yeah, even weighing positional value with obviously quarterback being number one, would you would you still draft – I mean, you would still draft him over two, obviously, especially with Tua's medical concerns, right? So, so in this year, year yes, just because, because Tua is, is such a wild card for that. But let's, let's just say Tua hadn't had a hip injury. He, he was, was having another very good season. Not, not, not a strong season as bro, but, but like he also was good last year, so he's a longer track record of being a good quarterback. quarterback. Um, so, so if two were healthy, it would be a really tough call. I think I have to lean towards two going second um, because quarterbacks just have that much value. Um, but Chase Young is good enough that for the last, let's say, I've been 2014, 2017, so for the last seven years, he's my number one non-QB off the board. Okay. it's pretty strong. Um, okay, so we have, um, tr- we'll transition to uh, a local topic for me. I'm not a Bears fan, but just for any anyone that uh, might listen to it that's a, a Bears fan, they're going to be, they're, they're obviously one of those teams that, um, whether they admit it or not, um, has a quarterback problem. I mean, most peop- most teams do, but um, when it comes to their second-round pick, 
Uh, is there anyone you think that will it be available once they come back? Or- so, so, so here's, here's the thing about the Bears. bears. Um, before, before you, you could solve your problems, problems you have to admit you have a problem. That's true. The, the bears, bears could do a few different things. things. They, they could, could exchange one problem for another in free agency by signing James Winston. Um, he's, he's available, like... like if they, they want to say, say, all right, he's still young, young. we understand why he's no longer the quarterback in Tampa Bay, why he lost his job on and off, but, you know what, after having dealt with Trubisky, we're going to take box number two. Okay, I can see that, but I totally understand it. They actually have, I believe, two second-round picks, and I think they're both in the top 50 overall, or something roughly like that. So, so if they, they wanted to, to, if they wanted to put together a package, they could move up to some point in the teens, I think, and go after love out of Utah State. If they wanted to say, you know what, we're going to go young, we're going to try another draft, draft pick, we're going to love again. again. So, that, so that, that's, that's another thing. thing. If they wanted to, they could do that. Now, if they're not interested in trading up and they're not interested in signing – uh, Winston, Winston I, I, I totally understand in both cases, cases. The door, door number three might be Jake from State from. from. If, if they, they decide to go with uh, Jake from, my issue with from is, is while well, he was a very good college quarterback, quarterback I don't think he has the arm strength to see in the NFL. NFL. Like, like, I worry that his arm strength might be worse than, say, Chad Pennington. And Chad Pennington, while he was a very good quarterback, I loved him for that. Um, it, it limited his ceiling, and if Fromm's arm strength is even worse, then he will have a tough time succeeding, particularly in the Windy City. Uh, but if they feel like he can work out for them, he's the next guy who I feel like could be a successful NFL quarterback if, okay. if his arm strength is good. So, like, the, all three of those doors, and I guess door number four is uh, Trubisky, like all four of those doors... They, they all have, have their concerns. concerns. Like, like the, the, the Bears, Bears are in a tough spot, spot and, and they have no one to blame themselves. Yeah. And I couldn't, I, I still can't remember, I still can't forget the reaction I had when my 49ers, um, you know, got that buttload of picks when they weren't even going to yeah. trade a, yeah. well, they, weren't, they weren't even going to draft a quarterback, but just the value of having that second pick, it was just, it was, it was great. Yeah, I, 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 that. Good good for them. I, yeah, I, I loved, and I loved that it was fleecing the, the city, uh, the team closest to me. So, and I know a lot of people didn't agree with the trade here. So, you know, and they're, you know, proven right. But, um, do, do you remember, remember the 1985 NFC game? Um, no, I mean I was too. Um, oh, okay, so you're too young. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. If I remember correctly, correctly and, and it's, it's been a long, long time, obviously. obviously but, but my memory is that the Bears beat the Forty Nine, maybe something like twenty one nothing, and they just crushed them. them. Um, so, so like, I, can I can understand the 49ers, 49ers wanting a little revenge against, against the Bears, Bears, even if it's been a while. while. Still, Still take these things personal. personal. Yeah, uh, I got to I got to see uh, a little revenge. I mean, obviously it wasn't in anyone's minds. I saw Kaepernick's first career game on the Monday night game in person. The, um, wow, wow. Very, very nice. Yeah, it was fun. Um, okay, I, so I wish I could talk about him, him as a viable random option for a team for quarterback, but it's pretty clear that his NFL days are over. Uh, he, like not. Yeah, I, I would say so. Um, I mean, I, I don't know when these um, these pundits or these journalists are going to stop using him as like uh, like when when a quarterback gets injured, like somebody considering Kaepernick, like you know, it's just clickbait or you know, just trying to rile up people at this point. I feel like because there's just no chance yeah. of him. Hey. Coming back. It's, it's exactly right. right. Like, like it's unfortunate. I'd love to see him back in the league because I'm so curious to see like how he perform. Yeah, he had, had a pretty high peak and then he fell off pretty badly. badly. Well, well, give him a chance to bounce back, back or not. Nah, this is the case, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah, it still blows my mind that he like j- just thinking of the fact that he was not only the quarterback of a team that was favored favored in the Super Bowl, but he was favored mm-hmm. against. Guys like Rodgers on the road, he was favored against. Yeah. you know, he, he, he was, was a really, really, really good quarterback. Really that offense that Harbaugh was putting in was, was very dangerous. It was scary. scary. Um, this, this was, was back when the, the run pass option, option 
uh, it was they were still adjusting to it, and he punished defenses really, really well. So like, yeah, I, I, I would love to see him get one more shot, but again, we don't see it happen. No, it's not. I've accepted, I've accepted it, and um, you know, I I don't think, but a lot of people have it, and for one reason or another, you know, for their own agendas, I don't know. But um, all right, one other thing that um, Hagren had here. Um, before we get into like just the specifics of the 2020 season itself, um, Hagren was asking about what happened to Chris Baylor tonight. He's the GM of the Colts, I believe. Yes. Um, so he's wondering so, what happened to him, like what, how things got off the rails so so bad after starting so well with him. Well, well my, 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 my concern is, is I, feel I feel like the Colts, Colts have been poorly run, run for a while, and that's, and that's not just going to be Bellatel, that's, that's ownership. ownership. Um. um if, if you, you have, have a bad owner, owner it's very, very hard, hard to come back. back and I think that they have some issues there. there. Now, now, in terms of Ballard, he, like, when, when Luck retired, it was a shockwave through the NFL. NFL. And whatever long-term plans, whatever vision, strategic vision Ballard had, had, just got blown up. Um, and so he may not have really recovered from that. Um, he might... Still be looking for grass and straws. Like, like the Rivers, Rivers contract is one of the things that Hager was talking, talking about. about. And yeah, yeah that's you look, look at that and go, really? Hey. And, and so, so um, no, no, I, I, I think, think the Colts are going to be in for a bad, bad time. time. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the Andrew Luck thing, obviously, I, you know, I know uh-huh. he was, I know he was hurt, um, but can you really plan, like? For him retiring, like, like, no, yeah, like, like you, you, you always have the certain amount of injury risk. risk well, maybe, maybe, maybe he won't be able to go, or maybe he won't be uh, at the same, same level, level, but just, just gone. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that really was, was a change. change. That, that was, was a surprise. surprise they didn't deal with. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get into the um, section here with NFL season in general and sports in general, and I. I know you've been pretty outspoken about this, or I don't know if outspoken is the right word, but you seem to have a strong opinion on this. So in terms of like what you're expecting regards to your season, are you still in the camp that there won't be one, or are you have you shifted? I do, your, not, I, I do not expect a 2020, 2020 NFL season. season. I really hope I'm wrong. But I, I just don't see. We're, we're dealing with a plague, a deadly one. one. A, a neurotoxic plague. Like, like when, when people are losing their sense of smell and sense of taste, taste that means you're having neurological issues. And if your virus is attacking you there, it's going to hit you in other ways as well. well. It's this, this thing's terrifying. terrifying. And, and so, and, and it's so communicative. It's so, so um, virulent that uh, I don't know how you just open up that many vectors of infection. Like people are afraid of having ten people in a room. Like, like for, for just doing, doing the draft, draft or whatever else. else. Like, yeah. um, and, and we, we want to have 22 people plus everyone on the sideline, plus all the plus whatever else. And you hope that works out for all these teams. teams. It's, it's going to be a challenge to pull it off. And then are these, are these guys, guys just not going, going home to their families? Are they not seeing them for the entire season? Um, that's another challenge. Like, it's. You have, have a, a lot, lot of moving, moving parts, parts and so, so many, many different things go wrong. Yeah, so I, th- I think with the number of people that need to minimum be on the sidelines for NFL is, is a challenge in itself that, like, you know, may- maybe in baseball, they're, I think I heard them talking about using the seats as, like, where the players can sit, like, I mean, it would be weird, but I mean, maybe they could do that. But it's it, there's they're just like there's so many, there's so many people that need to be on the sidelines in the NFL game that I couldn't see, uh, you know, I, I couldn't see how you could really separate them in a in a safe way. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't I don't see it either. either. Um, I, love I love the NFL. NFL. I hope I'm wrong. I'd love, love to see football again. again. I just don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like the simulated football is, is is your only option right now. Um, yeah. So, like, are you? What sports are you? What sport, like, out of the major ones, are you expecting? Me? Because I had um, I had Ed Miller on a few weeks ago, and he was thinking basketball mainly because of the uh, number of people involved. Like, you're only talking about like twelve guys, thirteen guys on a team. Um, what sport 
and what year are you expecting sports to come back? Well, well let, let, let's, let's first, first talk about, about the non team sports, sports where, where maybe with so, so many people involved, involved there's just, you, you can have, have such a limited number of people involved in, let's, let's say, a tennis match. match. Like, like hypothetical, hypothetical situation, situation, let's say Hawk, Hawkeye, um, just, just called all the lines. lines. Like, like, if you can, you can have player challenges, uh, that, that means, means it at least is capable of watching, watching lines. lines. So, so let's, let's just say you just, you just have the two players, um, and, and maybe, 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 I don't, I don't know, know if this would work test, test. Um, if, if you can get them, them say, you don't, you don't even have to swing inside or, you, or, or one player sits on one side of the court, court one player sits on the other. Um, I don't, I don't know, know like, like maybe you can get tennis running, running um, that, that way, and, and people talk about getting golf tournaments up and running, you're going to try to get that happening in June. Um, I don't know if we're going to see carts or see players carrying their own bags, which I think would be fantastic. That would be great. But, but uh, uh, I, don't I don't know. know. In, in terms, terms of team sports, sports as, as I said, I'm pretty, pretty bearish on all of them. Like, like, like maybe basketball, basketball but we just saw bas- basketball, both the NBA and NCAA, folded, folded pretty, pretty quick, quick once they realized, realized God, look what we're dealing, dealing with here. And so, so will, will they be able to get a quarantine? I don't know. Like, and in one sense, like if if the virus breaks quarantine. It has, it has this five-day five incubation period where you can transmit the virus, but you don't realize that you have it, and it could just explode through the population, like, like the way it happened with cruise ships and even military ships, whatever else. And I don't know what you do about that. I don't know how you solve that problem. Okay. All right. Um, we have a listener question from uh, Diggs about how you're going to Pass the time until sprouts uh, come back in 2022. So, so this gets back into the question that Hagrin asked earlier. earlier. Um, no, well, I'm going to have books. I'm going to be watching, watching all these British, British mysteries because I find, I find them quite enjoyable. enjoyable. Uh, uh, Inspector, Inspector Morris, Inspector Lewis, Lewis and Endeavor all, all take place in the same uh, universe, universe, just different years. years. Um, and I'm watching, watching those. those. Um, and, and again, again Shogun, Shogun is a really, really, really big book. book. We'd like to finish it by time, time that, that uh, Sprox comes, comes back in 2022. 2022. Okay. But we'll, but we'll see. see. Okay. So so 2022 then is like the the minimum I'm thinking you're still well, thinking. Uh, the, way the way I see, I see it, it, we need to either have an effective treatment or an effective, effective vaccine. Um, and both of those take a lot of time. Like you see the doctors talking about this. On their, on their projections, projections when, when we're going to be able to return to fully return to normal, return to normal, normal and, and all of them like, yeah, nine, nine times time soon, guys. guys. And, and if, if that's, that's the case, case then I don't, I don't, I don't see how sports can be any different. different. Yeah, I, and I was never one who knew anything about how vaccines actually were, how, like, tested and how, how long it took to actually test them. So, I mean, it, for a vaccine, my understanding is it takes over a year just to test it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and whether, whether or not, like, like whether, whether some, some groups are willing to say, you know what, this, this seems like it's working, let's just run it. Like, like Louis, Louis Pasteur, Pasteur, when he uh, created the vaccine that he did back in the day, he did, he did it using stuff completely, completely different than he was doing in his notes. He, 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 we, didn't we didn't know this until years, years later, until after he was dead, that he was flying by the seat of his pants and just having a workout. Maybe, Maybe some, some people are going to try that today, today simply because uh, COVID-19 is such a huge problem that they're going to turn to drastic measures. measures. I, don't I don't know if we'll see that, but it'll, it'll take a long, long, long time before, before we actually know and be confident in a successful vaccine. Are you, are you surprised at how quickly uh, um, c- certain states are like saying, you know what, fuck it, we're reopening? Or, or did you kind of expect Close that? Man, huh? Yeah, and, and actually Georgia, Georgia as well, but then you look at like, like Albany, Albany, Georgia, and the mayor's like, like you're out of your mind, we're getting, getting pounded here, here. Please, please don't do this. this. Like, like, the mayors of these municipalities recognize, recognize look, look, our hospitals are getting slammed, slammed. Our, people our people are dying, dying. don't do this. But you have the governors, at least certain governors, that are saying, you know what, open up. Time, Time for we're open business. business. And, then and then you, you have, have other states, states, again, with Republican governors, governors like Ohio and Maryland. Maryland. There's not, not so fast. fast. Uh, no, 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 no. 
Uh, we uh, we got to get, get things, things under control. control. We got to keep them under control. control. And, and that's why you, you see the rifts between them opening, opening up between them, them and the Trump administration, administration which would, would rather not see the economy tank by having people uh, not, not be able to work, work, work and just not having the states up and running fully for months, months at a time. And this, and this really is costing us a ton of money. Sure. Um, and this leads into oil. I don't know if you saw what I posted a little bit earlier, USO. Uh, uh, dropping uh, from, from 3.7 to, I think, 2.85 or 2.80. I think it was 3.75 to 2.8, dropping uh, more than 25% today. Huge drop. Um, and we saw the contango issues yesterday where oil ended up trading hugely negative because these oil contracts, the way they work is you have to actually take possession of the oil at a place currently in Oklahoma, and that place is pretty stocked up, and the storage costs of the oil are getting, getting quite high. high. Um, so, so we have, we have these oil futures now for later in the, later in the month, for next month. month. They, they look like they might be crashing as well because we're not using them much oil. We're not going anywhere. anywhere. And, and so, so we're pulling oil from the ground much faster than we're using it, and we're running out of places to put it. So we can see some real funky stuff on the markets pretty soon. Yep. So going back to the... The way states are handling it, and I, I'm I, taking it to like just being Amer- from America. Um, do you, I don't know how much you follow other countries, but are we unique in the fact that we have people like protesting this, or are there like other countries that are like fed up with like staying in, like like th- that you're aware of? Like I I don't I, again I don't really follow a lot of foreign press, so I don't know if there's like other um, you know people you know, countries that have these groups of people. And maybe maybe it's over-exaggerated in our country, too, because, like, I did see some pictures of some of these protests, and they weren't, like, they weren't, like, you know, thousands of people. Granted, it was hundreds of people, and they should, still shouldn't be doing it. But do you know if this is kind of uniquely American? From what, From what I, can I can tell you, yes. yes we, we do have a different culture. culture. But when it comes to protesting and when it comes to guns, guns. You, you might see, see a lot of those protesters are armed. Are armed. Yeah. And, uh, um... No, no I, I think this is, is um, we, we have a different, say, right, right wing than most other countries, countries and I think we're, we're handling uh, COVID-19 fairly different. different. Now, now, we also have, have a different situation where we have, we have lots of different independent states, states that form a nation, um, and, and different states, states are handling this differently, and certain states, states are getting these processors that we're seeing, so... I do not expect that the rest of the world is reconciling. And also, by the way, in terms, in terms of what, what the population, population thinks, thinks, most people don't want to open, open up the economy. They want to try and maintain social distancing and stay safe. Like, like the, the virus, virus is a super predator. predator. People, people are afraid of it, and they don't, don't want to engage with it. With it. So, so that's in general how people feel. feel. Yeah, and I, I think um, you have to take it with a grain of salt because I do think that the media is just you know bored and they're just trying to drum up. Uh, revenue oh, yeah. and, and scare like they normally do so like i'm sure some of these protests aren't as massive as they're trying to build them up to be well, yeah. um, Clicks matter. so um okay the um there i think we covered most of the listener questions i, I did have uh, a thought since i'm a niners fan one one thing that i was thinking up while um after i'd written the outline was about um you know just the, the past season that took place and also just um, you know Kyle Shanahan's role and and being on the losing side of a couple of late um, game collapses, and I was wondering, is that something as a Niners fan that you would uh, worry about, or is that just kind of like you know, so, just why are you even worrying about that? You know. So, so the big thing, thing is he he designed, designed a couple offenses that got, got to the Super Bowl. I'd, I'd, I'd be more. more Focus on that, and the fact that when they, they got the Super Bowl, it didn't always work out in the end. end. Uh, but one of the things I noted in both collapses is, is, is in both cases, cases they could have tried to run the ball more. In the uh, uh, Falcons' case, just run, 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 kick a field goal, and uh, go home. Um, in the more recent case, I believe they gained like five yards in first down. And then, and then had three, had three blue passes. passes. Um, so, so, like, like the, the running game, game I, don't I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe, maybe that's, that's a blind spot for him where he 
doesn't, doesn't run the ball, ball when the offers, offers him his best chance of victory. victory. Even I know, I know running backs don't matter, but like the 49ers running game, game their, their offensive line, line certainly, certainly does matter. matter. And their offensive line was really, really, really good, good at run blocking. So, so who yeah. knows? Maybe, 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 maybe they could have run the ball more. more. Like, how, like, how do you feel when they turn to their quarterback at the end? Well, I was the the thing that pissed me off the most. And I mean, it didn't help that I had many beers in me, but. Um, I, I spiked my hat at the end of the first half when they decided to just give up and not try to at least get a field goal. Yeah, yeah that, that was, uh, uh, let, let's, let's just call, just call that, that decision conservative. conservative. Yeah, uh-huh. um, yeah. It, 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 it reminds me, uh, um, but uh, I, I, I do get it. it. Like, uh, uh, you, you want to be the last one. one. With, with the ball, the ball and if they, they use the timeouts and they aggressively try to move the ball downfield, well, if it didn't work out, you would have given the Chiefs one, one more chance to counterattack. And, and he wasn't comfortable with that. Well, that is cowardly, you're right, right. and I don't know if it was the right decision, but he made it. So, so yeah. whatever. Yeah, I, 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 I get understand spiking the hat. Yeah, and you know I would I would have even been happy happy with, because I think it was three kneel downs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, don't I don't even know, know if they had to do all three, three if the Chiefs, Chiefs made, made them do all three. But I do remember that the 49ers did say, all right, we're not taking the time out. When you have the ball, yeah. and we're, we're just giving up. Yeah, so, yeah, that happens. so yeah, I, 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 I wasn't as concerned about the Jimmy G stuff at the end as I was about that. Like, I, may, Maybe it was irrational to worry about that, but just to try and at least get three points, knowing that how well your offense is just played in general the entire season, um, to not even try – I mean – I don't know. It, it was it was very frustrating. And that, so, like, just some of those qu- decisions that they made, like, I had to ask for your thoughts on, on him because you uh, tend to pay a little more attention to these things. Well, like, like, for the most, for the most part, part, I think he's, he's one, one of the best coaches, coaches in the NFL. In the NFL. Um, um, I, think I think he did a great job, job turning Jimmy G into, into a, a potential Super Bowl winning quarterback. Like, like that, good, good, well, well done, Shanahan. Shanahan. Um, um, uh, and his... <laughs> It's ironic that his ultimate downfall may have been in terms of trusting Jimmy G at the end instead of trusting the running game and the offensive line. Yeah. When they still could have tried to ride them to a last drive for victory. Who knows? Well, and you know what? Who knows? I certainly didn't expect them to make the Super Bowl, so that I have to remember that as a fan, like, that, hey. It was, it was a, a tremendous season. season. Yeah, it was. And... You know, there's only one fan base that's ever going to be, like, extremely happy at the end. Um, and, you know, I have to remember, hey, I wasn't even expecting to, to actually care about this game as much as I did. So, um, Sure. sure. Uh, you, know, you know, honestly, as a Jets, Jets fan, fan they've, they've done 0-4 in the AFC Championship in my lifetime. lifetime. I would, I would like, like to see, to see them play in a Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Sure, sure I'd, I'd want them to win it. it. Yeah. But I'd, like I'd like to get to, get to one, one too. too. Sure. <laughs> Sure, and that's and that's as a fan, you know, that's you know, you have to set reasonable expectations. You can't just be like the players and and and, and say like Super Bowl or bust. Like, you know, you got to have expectations that are reasonable. And you know, I I was expecting eight or nine wins to be honest. So yeah, um, yeah. so yeah, again, uh, an amazing, amazing job. job by... By them, by them, like, like their, their, their defense, defense started the season, like, like House of Fire, the coverage. coverage. It was amazing. It was amazing. Perfect. Perfect. Um, let, me, let, me, let me come back to Chase Young for a second. Okay. I'm going to be reading, reading off, off of what, what I wrote, wrote. So, so if I sound a bit, a bit nerdy, nerdy, if this sounds non-conversational, non-conversational apologize, apologize. I'm, I'm reading off of my NFL draft, draft preview. Sure. So Chase Young, one of my draft models has Young as the next Lawrence Taylor. Young, Young projects to be even better than his former teammate, teammate and defensive rookie of the year, Nick Bosa. I already watched the Clemson game to see what a bad game from Young looks like. Instead, instead what I found was an offense building their entire game plan around shutting, shutting him down. down. That's respect. That's respect. His combination of size, athleticism, and reaction time is unique. His teammate, cornerback Jeff Okuda, is the most likely number three pick. Given that, now seems a good time to talk about the coverage versus pass rush debate. When, when game, game planning, planning, if you feel like a like cornerback is truly elite, elite, you can simply not throw it him and play 10 on 10. 10. That's, That's a bigger handicap than it sounds like as it reduces the space on the field that you can attack. If you're, if you're facing an elite edge, you better have, have one, one of the best tackles in the game or build, or build your game plan around shutting, shutting him down. down. That, includes that includes blocking him from tight ends, running backs, see matter, and possibly guards. Even with that, you'll still make some plays. 
This is, this a, is containment a containment strategy and one, and one that the great pass rushers will get used to, used to, used to on a weekly basis. basis. Given, Given a choice between the two, there aren't many offensive coordinators, coordinators that would choose to face the elite edge rusher. rusher. So, so why does some research suggest coverage, coverage is, more is more important than pass rush? rush. The, answer the answer is because that measures something, something other than elite, quarter, quarter, elite, elite quarterback, quarterback play versus elite pass, pass rush performance. performance. You've all heard the term covered sacks. In a three-step drop, you'll need to break through the line off the snap to get a sack to get a non-covered sack. Uh, in other, in other words, words, if the initial read is open, it's, it's very difficult to sack the quarterback. That's, That's one of the reasons why the short passing game has dramatically increased popularity over the past few decades. In five and seven step drops, the defense has a bit more time to get the quarterback. One of the reasons EPA, expected points added on down some passes is greater than the EPA and shorter passes, is the former requires one thing to have already gone right. The offensive line held their initial blocks. Last, Last season, the Patriots 49ers, that's why I'm bringing this up, started the, the, the defense started, started the season on fire. fire. Their pass rush, rush numbers were great, but it wasn't actually coming from the defensive line. line. Quarterbacks, Quarterbacks were holding the ball unusually long, long against both defenses. defenses. So the, so the linemen had time to clean up. Okay. In short, In neither, neither defense had any pigeons or holes in the zone. Pass, pass coverage is a holistic thing. If the offense has a good matchup, they can target it. If the, if the defense, defense is a good matchup, matchup the quarterback will look elsewhere. Where things, things break down for the offense is when there's no weak links. links. So would so a defense be happy with a bunch of competent but non-elite defensive backs? I suppose, but there's, there's still darn good reasons you'd want an elite cornerback. cornerback. Number, Number one, one wide receivers usually earn that title for a reason, New York Jets accepted. They pressure the defenses and generally require a specific plan to handle. Sometimes, Sometimes the defense will shade, shade the safety towards, towards them. them. Other times they'll, they'll stick the number one quarterback, quarterback on them wherever the wide receiver lines up. up. Having, Having an elite quarterback who can take the one, number one wide receiver, receiver out of the game by themselves takes a lot of stress, stress off the defense and forces the offense to turn to weak options. There's another thing to discuss, though. If the offense line does their job and the quarterback and wide receiver do theirs, good coverage still loses on the play. That's part, That's part of the reasons why, why there's this concept that defense doesn't matter. It's seen some discussion lately. Obviously, Obviously that's, that's an oversimplification. oversimplification. The underlying the issue is that offensive performance is more determinative of the results of the play than defensive performance. The defense, the defense can, can make the offensive's job harder, but if the throw, throw is in the right place, place shrug emoji. So, so let's, let's bring that back, back to the topic at hand. hand. Coverage versus pass rush. Good, good coverage won't necessarily produce good results, especially, especially when facing elite receivers. Pass, pass coverage numbers fluctuate quite a bit for quarterbacks from year to year. In fact, in fact defensive, court, 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 defensive performance in general overall is less predictive than offensive performance. performance. The difference in levels of control over the result of play is, is a big reason why. why. I am very, very leery of defining coverage, coverage based, based on the results of play. If a, if a website were to, do, to declare, declare that coverage, coverage is more important than pass rush, rush I'd like the cornerback rankings make to make a bit more sense for taking, taking too much stock into that conclusion. conclusion. Good, good coverage results are descriptive of good, of good defense. defense. If we want, if we want to, separate to separate the noise from the signal, signal at this we look at defenses that present no easy areas to attack. To wrap this up, you need quality cornerback depth. Everyone on the field must be able to do their job. Sometimes, Sometimes the job means matching, matching up against, against an elite receiver, receiver. so yes, so yes elite cornerbacks matter a great, a great deal. deal. But elite but defensive ends put a bigger, bigger strain on the offensive game plan and the resources, and the resources on any given play. play. That's, That's one of the reasons why elite pass, pass rushers break, break the bank in ways elite cornerbacks do not. Um, if, you if you look at the top salary rankings, the top ends get paid more than the top cornerbacks. I would, I would suggest that to build, build an elite defense, defense solid, solid defensive backfield depth, depth is a must, must, but that's not an argument for elite cornerbacks over elite pass rushers. Pass rushers. Mind, Mind you, Chase Young is special, so this isn't a general case. case. He's the best player in the draft, draft and should be the first non-quarterback non off the board. So yes, so yes you, had you had a great defense, defense you, had, you had, had no weak links in your secondary, you guys did great. Yeah, and... and um. Yeah, you, you summed it up pretty well. Um, so with so you seem to be, um, uh, you seem to have a stance on that overall that that you would value the, I mean, obviously yeah, you yeah. want to you want a blend of both. Obviously, like that's yep, yep. you know that's obviously like the no brainer. But if you had to choose between the two, you would 
go with the elite um, the elite pass right. Right. rush. Now, now that's, that's not, not to say, say that, that in terms, in terms of, your of your resources in general, in general you should spend more, more of your overall resources, resources on pass rush uh, than coverage, coverage because you need, you need coverage, coverage depth. depth. You need to, to not, not have any, any areas, areas where, where all right, all right, this is the guy we're game planning against, I want to pound the shit out of him. Yeah. Um, you see, you see where, where guys, guys get hurt, get hurt and some, and some of their placement comes in the field, and then, and then boom, boom, there's three straight passes, passes at. Like, like that's, that's, not a, not that's not bad, bad luck. luck. That's, that's not a coincidence. That's, that's, that's yep. yep. We're going to make, make him prove, him prove that he can play football, football and if he can't, you're screwed. So, yeah. So, yeah. He needs you need to make sure you invest a solid amount of resources in coverage, but if you just have a choice, spending the same amount on an elite cornerback or an elite pass rusher. Well, as, well, as you do in the draft, draft the salaries, salaries are pretty much standardized, standardized, then yeah, then, yeah you, take you take the elite pass rusher. pass rusher. So would you say, too, that um, that the elite pass rushers might have a, a longer shelf life, or am I maybe not thinking? Because the one example I'm thinking of, for example, I remember, um, I, and I, I forget how to pronounce his name, Asimov or whatever from the Raiders that went to the Eagles, and he just kind of like... So, so that was actually... An issue of a terrible, terrible schematic. schematic okay, thing. so a scheme. Like, like it was he, a scheme thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but we do, we do know that, that cornerbacks, cornerbacks see their numbers, see their numbers, numbers change more from year to year, year, and sometimes they, just, they don't, they don't have, have it anymore. anymore. And we've, and we've seen, seen other, other cases, cases for pass rushers, rushers where, yeah, yeah they, they, when, when they get older, they might play less. They might not be on the field for as many snaps, but these guys have gotten pretty old. So... I don't know, I don't know. Like, like what you're, you're going to get more of in the long, long run. run. You, can you, can get, get, you can get, you can have your pass rusher stay on the roster for a surprisingly long, long time. time. So, so, so no, that. Okay. And one question I thought of when you were talking about line play um, with Tua, you got a left-handed quarterback. So if yes. you yes. if you um, if if you draft Tua and your best tackle is your left tackle, do you move him to the right, or is there like an adjustment that? You might not be able to do that so easily. So, so my, my answer, answer would be, be no. no. You don't, you don't flop, flop over, over the other, the other side. side. What you're going to try to do is pick up an elite right, right tackle because those, those are cheaper in the marketplace, marketplace than the left tackles. Okay. And I'm uh, guessing, and, uh, yeah. yeah. And I'm guessing like um, there would be different technique between the left and the right in general, right? Or is there? So, so the, the, the jobs, jobs are, are a little, little bit different. different. Um, the, right the right side, side you generally look for more look for power. power. The, left the left side, you look, you look for more of a pass block specialist. specialist. Okay. Um, um, but, but in the case, in the case of, of Alabama, Alabama uh, their, uh, their right tackle, I believe his name is Andrew Thomas, Thomas. Um, he was a right tackle both in high school and in college, and he was going to blind side in college, and he did a great job of it. He's available in draft, like, for a team that drops to a, they might, might say, you know what? what? We'll try, we'll try to make it a pack of steel. Get, get them both. Get both. If, they if they can get, can get Thomas, Thomas cheap. cheaply. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Maybe, they, maybe can, they can, maybe, maybe they, they can't. can't. Um, just, just a pure, a pure hypothetical, hypothetical here. here. But you might, you might be able to find right tackles at a good price other places as well and go in that direction. Okay. All right. I think that covers the draft questions. There was a Magic the Gathering question that I asked. So, 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 so uh, I played the game, game Magic the Gathering. Gathering. There was, there was a, a recent set that, that came out, the um, which, which has shifted things up quite a bit. We were asking, asking what I'd recommend play. playing. Uh, uh, just, just for those of you who care, for those of you who are listening for magic reasons, reasons. I'm, I'm yeah. surprised it's been long this long. But there's, I think the guy is called Kobothit, the one where you can't play any spells for two or less mana. Have, have him as, as your companion, companion and play fires, and play fires of, of invention. invention. So, so that's that's the deck would be fine. Okay. <laughs> and, and yeah, to to let people know, like, if you Google Seth's name, uh, you'll actually find a Magic the Gathering tournament that you were in a while ago. So, uh, so long, long ago. ago. Yep. Yeah, yep. How long ago was that? I want to say at least a decade, probably close to 15 years, years, but who knows? Okay. Magic's been 25, 25 years, years and I was there for all of them. Okay. Are they? Are they obviously not this year? But have they still been doing those every year? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's. Uh, there's um, there are, they've, switched they've switched it to be more, to be more of an online, online game recently, recently okay. with more, with more larger, larger online, online tournaments. tournaments. And, and frankly, that has proven, has proven to be a very fortuitous decision, decision now that we're all, we're all stuck, stuck at home and online. online. Sure. Okay. Um, well, any final thoughts before we 
call it a day? Um, um, let's, let's, let's look, look at, at the, the top, top 10, 10, the first, the first overall, overall pick. pick. Sure, should be Burrow. Burrow. I hope, I hope he succeeds in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. They, they have, have been a been cursed franchise. Again, Again mostly, mostly bad ownership, but, but hopefully he turns things around. Second. Second. I, honestly I honestly hate the Redskins, Redskins enough, enough that I hope Fisham doesn't turn them around. around. Screw them. Um, <laughs> with the third overall pick, pick the Lions, I have, I have a good friend, friend who's, who's a pretty big Lions fan. Um, maybe, 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 maybe they, they can get a bounty of picks for that, for that uh, third, selection. third selection. I, I doubt, doubt it. it. I'm guessing they're going to take Jeff Kuda. Um, um, hopefully that, that works, out, works out, out for them. them. But, but by the way, way like, like Stafford, Stafford is not a young, young quarterback, quarterback anymore. anymore. So, so it's one of those, one of those things, things that keep in the back of my mind. Are they, are they willing, willing to start planning for the future there? I don't know. It feels like he's been in the league for like 15 years. He might. He might. He's, he's, been, there he's been there for a while, while Fatty Matty, and, and he's actually been really, really good lately. So, so maybe, 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 maybe now's, now's up time to start thinking about putting him faster. Yeah. Um, um, then you have the Giants. Anyone, anyone who, like, like Gettleman, Gettleman, he's got to have a wide range of things he could do. Because, like, yeah, last year, he took a couple years ago, he took Barkley, when everyone was telling him not to, and then last year he took Jones, 6 overall, like, He's capable of surprising us. He's, he's going to do what he's going to do, and we won't be able to say he'll model, model his brain. Yeah. Because, <laughs> again, <laughs> why would we want to? Um, and then you have the Dolphins. If they didn't trade up, up, well, do they go to Like People are thinking, thinking they might take Herbert. Herbert. And like, and like ew, 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 ew. I get not taking to a. I understand, but that doesn't mean. Yeah, I don't. If you read my preview, preview talk, talk, look, see where I, see where talk, I talk about the quarterbacks, quarterbacks. Not, a not a fan. Yeah, just, uh, just just because you avoid one bad decision doesn't mean you have to make another, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly right. right. And then you, and have, then you the have the Chargers. They're, They're also, also in the market, in the market for, for a quarterback. quarterback. Um, I, I, don't I don't know if they're hoping that Tua falls to them or if they want to go in a different direction. I don't remember who was the seventh pick in the draft, but I do remember... That the, the defensive lineman, lineman uh, I, think uh, I think his name Brown, is Brown, is expected, is expected to go, to go there. there. But, but this is going to be a wacky, wacky draft. draft. Like, like, I, expect I expect to see a variety of surprises, of surprises in the first round. round. And, and as they get drunker and drunker, drunker they'll be more exciting. <laughs> so what's your... Uh, do you have a drink of choice lined up for, for Thursday? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Again, so my plan for Thursday night is to go to this restaurant, get some takeout from them, Get a takeout take bottle of wine from them, go home, go home and, and chow down, down and drink up. up. Nice. So it's so going to be a bottle, bottle of, red. of red. All right. Great. Um, well, Seth, once again, thanks for joining. I hope you stay safe. I hope all your loved ones in the area stay safe and keep uh, you. supporting you. your local businesses and doing yep, what yep. you can because I, I think uh, it's very important that we try to do that. The people that – can't afford it because obviously some people can't so it makes sense to uh avoid that if you're you know hurting but if, if you can i feel like this is important time for all of us to try and do what we can to help out our local businesses here so absolutely, um, absolutely. so again seth thanks for joining next week i have uh thanks for having yeah, me. yeah no problem next week i'll have jobo i think it'll be next week or the week after so um enjoy the nfl draft and everyone i'll talk to you soon talk to you, talk to you then all right yeah, thanks yeah,